Well, the Russian Prime Minister, Mikhail Mishustin, telling a meeting of the Russian cabinet today that the country faced a challenge to its internal stability after that apparent attempted rebellion by the Wagner military group that saw thousands of armed soldiers preparing to march on Moscow. In the end, as you know, the march stopped. The Wagner military group went back to their barracks. Officials claim its leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, will now be given asylum in Belarus. No one seems to know where he is at the moment. Gustavo Kovalo is a senior researcher in the African Governance and Diplomacy Program at the South African Institute of International Affairs. Gustavo, good afternoon to you. I mean, obviously a very difficult weekend in Russia, it seems. This rebellion or coup or a rebel attack was finally averted, but is it really possible to know what actually happened and why Prigozhin would suddenly launch an attack like this that seemed aimed at the Russian president? Thank you very much. And I think what we've seen in the last couple of months is already a very tense relationship between the Wagner Group and the Ministry of Defense. There's been very complicated, and especially after the Battle of Bakhmut, uh, and, and when Minister Shoigu, the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation, started creating new mechanisms for increasing the control of private, private military uh, companies like, like, like the Wagner Group, it certainly created a much more difficult situation for the Kremlin in, in, in a way that it shows that its ability of taking control of its military within Ukraine is becoming more and more complicated. But also for Prigozhin, that in, in a way shows the desperation of losing what it is, what it is for him a cash cow, what it provides him, a lot of influence in Russia. But certainly what we're going to see from now on is quite uncertain in this, this space. We, we, we know that he's going to Belarus. We don't know in what capacity or whether he's going to be in exile or whether the Wagner group is going to have any kind of role within, within the country. But it does show that for, for Vladimir Putin, it's another uh, difficulty when it coming to dealing with uh, an opposing voice, with someone that wasn't that was seen as very close to Putin for many years, but now uh, a, a lot of the dynamics have been changed. You know, it will be important to see what happens in the next days and weeks. Um, there's so many elements to this, but for Prigozhin, at one point in the last five days, for him to think that he could have done this that he could almost get away with it, uh, literally survive, I mean physically survive. He must have believed that the Russian President Vladimir Putin is pretty weak. I mean, is that one of the things to draw from this, that at least by the calculation of a Wagner group which has been fighting in Ukraine on behalf of Russia, he believed that Putin is actually weak? Absolutely, and, and also his own understanding and, and belief that he was very strong. Uh, he has around 50,000 men uh, working under his command. And, and, and while I don't think necessarily that was a coup attempt, but rather a mutiny, if, if we see in terms of what the demands were through all, throughout the last couple of days, all of them were very directed to Minister Shoigo and the Ministry of Defense, which make one, one believe that his intention was really shaken the, the, the structure of the Ministry of Defense. And by doing that, maintaining his own influence, control of his own troops, but particularly the access of financing that the Wagner Group has, has guaranteed in the last couple of years in Africa, but particularly in Ukraine in the last year and a half. There's so many other things to it. So um, do you think that the Wagner Group is going to survive? I mean, if it's changed, if there's a big change to the Wagner Group, that will have huge implications for many countries on our continent in Africa, where the Wagner Group is playing a big role. We've already seen today Minister Lavrov, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, stating that the Wagner Group would remain in places like Mali and Central African Republic. Uh, at the moment, we don't know what kind of structure would that be. Will the control of the Wagner Group be taken by someone else? We've seen with the FSB, uh, uh, the, the secret service of the, 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 the Russian government, uh, with the raid they've done to the Wagner Group headquarters in Moscow, already uh, uh, getting some assets, uh, taking over uh, uh, what, what is claimed now to be around 35 million pounds in, 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 in cash. So, so, so the big question now is that what is going to happen with that leadership of the Wagner Group? Uh, and and it, one would, should expect there would be a reduced role by, for Prigozhin himself uh, but it's still too early to know exactly what the details would be. 
especially when we know that despite having a very opaque structure, the Wagner Group has de facto operated as an extension of the Russian foreign policy in Africa, and we should expect that in one way or another that would continue to be under whose leadership, we still don't know, but it's something for us to be watching uh, in the near future. So for the position now that Putin is in, um, and sometimes it can be really important to look, I mean, in democratic politics too, but around the world, it's quite important to look like no one can ever attack you. No one can, there's no chink in your armor. There's no hole in your armor. So now, um, in this case, there's been that sort of hole in his armor. Um, how does he respond now? Does he now more than ever need to look like he's firmly in charge? And does that mean that he goes on the offensive in Russian democratic politics, perhaps of some kind of crackdown? If history is something to, for us to base his action on, we should definitely expect a very harsh response at this stage. We've seen many of his opposition uh, uh, and critics have been in jail or in, in many claims of potential assassinations that, that occurred. I'm not saying that this is necessarily going to happen to Prigozhin, but we should indeed expect at this, this, this stage for Vladimir Putin to take very strong action uh, towards that and potentially having the opposite effect to what Prigozhin wanted to consolidate the role that those that are in leadership positions within the Ministry of Defense uh, and to, to, to consolidate Putin's own role as a strong leader that is able to, to deal with such type of mutiny. So, 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 so that seems quite clear to me that it's what, what Putin is going to be doing in the coming weeks. There's other things to it, of course, around the leadership in Russia and the leadership of its military in particular and one of the big things as you point to was Prigozhin was very upset with the people who were managing the war in Ukraine. Is Putin now going to be in a position where he's going to have to have some sort of shake up? He's going to have to try new leadership of the military in Ukraine and does that mean that maybe you know the Russian forces might actually do slightly better in Ukraine than they have been? Difficult to know. I think at this stage, certainly by changing the leadership of the Ministry of Defense would create more ammunition for what Prigozhin has been claiming. Uh, we are the one thing that it would be important for us to watch in, in terms of next actions is what happens to uh, the private military corporations that are in Ukraine and in terms of the contract that is expected to be signed between themselves and Ministry of Defense. That is quite an important step, especially as much of the criticism that the Russian army has been faced is by its own very decentralized nature. We have the Wagner Group uh, in Ukraine, but we also have other uh, groups that are not directly controlled by the Ministry of Defense. And I think that the important one to also watch here is what happens with the Chechen uh, groups that have been uh, uh, placing, uh, have been placed in Ukraine and seemingly have the, done quite quite an important role in countering what the Wagner Group has done over the weekend. So, so, so in that regard, it could actually be a positive step for Putin himself if he's able to have more control of the army. But it does create a major distraction, especially in the middle of a, 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 an increasing counteroffensive from Ukraine and something that has been expected already for months. And what will happen on the terrain will have very dire implications for the future of the war in Ukraine, but also for that domestic dynamics within Russia itself. One of the other players here is President Alexander Lukashenko. He, of course, is the president of Belarus. Um, and from what we understand, or what's been said publicly, let me put it like that, he has agreed to let Prigozhin go and live in his country, given him uh, asylum of some kind. So if I, if I understand this correctly, and you'll know it far better than I do, um, Lukashenko is really a client of Putin. He relies on Putin to stay in power. And we saw that during those pro-democracy protests about 18 months ago in Belarus. So now Lukashenko, who depends on Putin, is now helping or giving a sort of home to Putin's main military enemy. Um, that's an uncomfortable position for him, surely. Absolutely. And, and when we look at this whole process, we see that the future regime in Belarus is very closely linked to the one of what is happening in Moscow. Uh, the, the 
this discussion have happened without the consent Vladimir Putin. It's still the role that Prigozhin himself will be playing in Belarus. Is it, and we haven't seen any public statements since the the, the, the agreement of turning back up going to Moscow. But it's certainly a very important aspect of the, the current discussions, what will happen to Prigozhin within Belarus. Uh, but I doubt it was something that was done without the consent of Vladimir Putin himself, and we should be expecting more information to be coming in the coming days. Gustavo de Cavallo, a senior researcher at the South African Institute for International Affairs, really appreciate the time and the insights. Thank you. In